Hey there, Blunderheads, and welcome to another video of Quick Tips for Grease Pencil. It's a series I'm going to be doing, uh, just throwing in some quick tips that would be very useful for anybody who uses uh, the Grease Pencil. And today we're going to be going over uh, stroke order. And what stroke order is, is when you draw on the Grease Pencil, you'll see that it'll always draw on top. So I'll switch colors here, you'll see that there's the red, there's the blue, you know, there's the pink and it's always drawing on top there's an, actually an option for you to be able to draw behind your objects so if you select this option right here is a little square icon kind of hidden away here uh, it says draw strokes on back if you just click on that boom it's turned on now when you draw it's going to draw behind the strokes that are already placed so i'll draw this circle behind all these and you may be wondering why this uh may be useful so Let's say we'll do a quick example here. We're going to draw a little figure. We'll draw the head. You know, we'll draw the neck. And, you know, a little part of the body. And then we will draw some hair. So when, when we draw the hair, this, put it right in the front. I want to be able to have hair behind the neck and the head. So what you can do is you can turn this on. And then you can just draw that behind. And then boom, you have the hair in the back. Then you can take it off and then continue drawing. And you don't have to go and then trace, you know, the, the hair in the back. I use this quite often. So a tip that I would give you is if you right click uh, on the uh, icon that you want, which is the job strokes behind on the back, you can add to quick favorites. So click on that. And what that means is that now when you press Q, which is where your quick favorites are located, you can see that you have it right here. So then you can quickly just turn it on and off, you know, change colors, do your thing boom draw the hair oh turn it off turn it on oh mess that up you know draw the hair behind now there we go but you know you get the picture so i would definitely um ooh, did it again see but i turned it off with the quick menu and now i draw in front um i would definitely suggest using that this cue this quicks menu uh uh option as often as you can because things that you do all the time you want to save that the clicks and you want to save the moving back and forth um, another thing i want to show you about stroke order is uh, let's say you already have the strokes down and i created this example here to make it clear uh, and there's a few ways that you can order this like let's say after the fact you wanted to move this stroke uh, to the back so what you could do is you can go into edit mode Click on the one you want to go behind, which is this one right here, and then uh, right click and go to arrange strokes and you can bring forward or bring back. See, I have these already set to a shortcut as the left bracket or the right bracket and the left bracket. And I did that because they're not normally set this way by right clicking and putting change shortcut and then I add the shortcut. So now I just use the bracket keys I click on it and I can move it behind. I can move it in front. Moving behind, moving in front. Very useful if you need to like rearrange things that aren't uh, arranged correctly, or maybe you messed them up. Uh, or maybe they messed up on their own. Maybe it ain't your fault. So that's a pretty quick tip. And you can also add these into your quick menu, which is the Q, if you don't wanna, you know, assign uh, them shortcut keys. Another interesting thing to know about stroke order is that if you go to your layer, cause this, this is all involves in the layer. So here's our layer here. Uh, and you go to the in your stroke, go to object data properties, and let's close all these so you can see what I'm talking about. And if you go to strokes, you see that you have stroke depth order. And right now it's in 2D layers. And what that means is that it's taking it's just treating it as a 2D space and you can control the, what goes in front and what goes behind by the technique that I just showed you. But you can actually do this in 3D space so you can change this to 3D location. And now you see that there's this weird glitch here and that's because all of these are sharing the same space and it's trying to take 3D um, location into consideration. So let's click on this middle one. And if we hit G for like grab or move and we do it on the Y axis, which is forward and back, you can see that I can move it behind. And let me show you the camera, just change the camera angle here. You can see that that stroke is actually behind the other strokes um 
I believe in the next Blender 2.92, there's going to be a transform local, which is going to solve some of these issues as well, especially with layers. But for right now, that's what this stroke depth order does for 3D. And if we switch it back to 2D now, now it's taken into consideration just as if it was 2D layers, like it's assigned a position. So if I, I can move it to the front, but here's the peculiar thing about this. So let's move it all the way to the front. Now the green's in the front, but since we were in the 3D and we moved it behind, it's actually still technically in the background. Even though when it crosses the blue and the red, it stays in front. And that's because it's taking the 2D layers into consideration. Switch it to 3D, you'll see that it switches over and now it's behind again. So those are some ways to um, deal with uh, stroke layers and order. And I think it's very useful to know as you're, you're, do, you're going on your grease pencil journey. Uh, so yeah, just to recap the button up here, you can click on it. So as you draw, you can uh, draw behind and in front. You can right click and add things into your uh, quick favorites, which is your Q key. And you can also ch go to strokes here and change how this uh, this object treats its um, objects or its layers and its strokes, whether it just sees it as a 2D layer and it assigns it a position or if you assign it 3D locations and you can actually move the things, the objects or the strokes in 3D space like this. So I hope that helps you guys and I hope that you learned something new. Uh, please like and subscribe. I'll be making more of these quick tips for grease pencils in the future. So I hope to see you there soon. Please comment if you have any suggestions or if I if there's an extra uh, thing I miss that involves this um, particular technique because I'll pin that comment. I'm really all about the community, guys. So like, comment, subscribe. You know the deal. I'll see you on the next one, guys.